Hello friends and a warm welcome to the preview of this second test match between Australia and South Africa in this World Cricket Chat. Uh, South Africa have taken a stunning 1-0 lead in the series and the big question now is whether the under fire Australia can bounce back to level the series at Hobart. Joining me from Mumbai is Shruti. Hello Shruti, the weather seems to have become cooler in Mumbai. Well, um, Sunir, I wish it could get a lot colder, so I have my fingers crossed for that. Now, what did you make of Australia showing in the first test? Well, the first test might not be muttered in the same breath as the one in Eden Gardens in 2001, that famous India-Australia test match. But as far as turnarounds are concerned, it was one of the biggest one in test cricket in recent times. Uh, Australia should have wrapped things up nicely after they got to 158 without loss and reply to South Africa's 242 and even more so when the visitors lost Dale Stain. But their batting folded in a way that one had become so accustomed to seeing in Sri Lanka, except that that was on a harder and a slightly bouncier whack up pitch uh, on which they collapsed. Uh, also thought Aussie bowling in the second innings looked undercooked on what was becoming a flattish surface and that could have been due to the lack of red ball cricket that they have endured in recent times. And also, Mitchell Stark was coming back from an injury, so he did not look uh, very fit in that second innings. A bit of exhaustion going their way, Shruti. Some changes in the offing for Australia then? Well, two of them have been forced onto them by injuries. And David Warner will now have a new opening partner in Joe Burns after Sean Marsh suffered uh, another injury. While Peter Siddle gets ruled out too and Joe Many could make his uh, test match debut. Although Jackson Bird uh, has been called in as cover and has a bowling average of 25.28 in the five test match that he has played. Could also be a shoe in, uh, of course, only if his batting has improved enough for the selectors to bring him in. Uh, there's one other possible change. Uh, Mitchell Marsh has been under a lot of pressure in that uh, all-rounders role at number six. Uh, for him to retain his place, uh, uh, the selectors might be looking at uh, the weather. He has had a wretched time of late in test cricket. Uh, and with Callum Ferguson in the side, Australia could opt to play an extra batsman if the coolish weather of Hobart allows it. Uh, Shruti, what's your take on Australia? Australia appear to be a little confused, lost in fact. But as the match progresses, there is definite hope. They do battle through and put up a strong fight. I wouldn't write them off so soon in this series, but it will be quite a challenge. So where would you see them most challenged in this test match uh, in Hobart? Well, batting in both innings appears to be more of a challenge. Now, let's look at the first innings. The openers and the middle order don't seem to have very favourable cards. It's the low order's efforts that could add much-needed respectability. With the second innings, it's the middle order that should do well. Well, they would need their middle order to do well, but what about their bowling? It's the bowlers that keep them in the game. It's their battles that will help the team come together and put more of an effort in the field. I expect the bowling to be balanced and better controlled. Now, Sunir, South Africa time. Would you rate that South African showing as one of their best in test cricket since they came back to playing the game? Well, that would be a huge statement to make, but uh, it was definitely one of their best. Uh, and given that I already compared it with the 2001 Eden Gardens uh, test match, I would uh, say that, yep, uh, it was one to watch out. Uh, there was a lot of chatter from the South African uh, camp before the start of the series, but when they fell so behind in the test uh, midway through day two, it did seem like it had been a case of all boast. Well, not quite. There was quite a stunning showing from their bowlers after the day's stay injury to bowl, uh, to bowl Australia out so cheaply and then to pile on the batting agony in the second inning. So, hats off to that, that showing from South Africa. Kagiso Rabada won the Man of the Match award, but it looked like a proper team effort from South Africa. Uh, I'll talk about Rabada. He has given us glimpses of uh, what he can do over the last couple of years, but this could well have been that watershed performance of uh, his uh, of, of players uh, in their careers from where they look like a, a very different player altogether and this could be one of one of those performances from him uh, look I think Rabada seemed to have lost a bit of control in that ODI series against Australia before this test series and even in that first innings he seemed to be going through some motions a tad uh, bowling a little uh, wayward uh, uh, spells uh, before he looked to have gotten a talking to by someone uh, and voila that second inning showing was something of a marvel he went 
going on in that heat, uh, asking his captain uh, for an extra over almost every spell. And a big reason why South Africa won the Test match, despite uh, being left with just three bowlers, including a debutant for most parts. Uh, his uh, five-wicket haul in the second innings could uh, well be one of the bowling performances of uh, the year. Uh, uh, Dean, Dean Elgar and J.P. Dumini were impressive with the bat, and while Quinton Decock looked to be continuing uh, from... Uh, where he had left off in South Africa. And last but not, not the least, definitely not the least, uh, one of bowling in the first innings was one of the main reasons why the visitors managed that turnaround. And on a surface that might be having something on it, uh, he could remain a handful in Hobart. Uh, Shruti, your turn in talking about this test match. Uh, you had picked South Africa to win the first game and you're quite bang on. Will they continue their momentum into the second test match? Well, yes, that was a good prediction, but I have to admit, I was a little shaken up after their first innings. Now, to answer your question, South Africa look very, very likely to keep their momentum alive. And this is mainly because of really good teamwork. They may lose focus from time to time, but it shouldn't be so bad that they can't get out of it. So it might not be an ideal game for them, you mean, and uh, probably they recover from it from uh, difficult situations? Well, yes, things can't always be that perfect, but their first innings batting and bowling should deliver what is expected, and more importantly, what's needed. And that's a fine balance of sensibility and aggression. I'm going to get to my concerns now. Batting in this second inning starts off well, but it may fizzle away in patches, and bowling too, although balanced at first, may lose their way from time to time. But here's what helps the South African bowlers. It's in fact Australia's indifferent batting. So this should be another interesting game of this series. Sunir, who will you pick? Look, based on what the curator has said, uh, there won't be too much reverse swing in Hobart. One of the the reasons that South Africa's uh, bowlers were able to dominate in that uh, first innings as well, uh, which could mean South Africa will miss Dale Stain, who has been ruled out of the series because of a shoulder fracture. But it also means that I'm going to refrain from making a prediction here, given how <laughs> this could turn out. It could turn out uh, to be a bit of a lottery, thanks to uh, poor batting techniques these days against uh, such brand of bowling. If there is consistent uh, swing uh, through the match, then uh, I would say that uh, uh, the team bowling first could have a bit of an advantage. Uh, you sticking with South Africa for this one as well? Well, this should be a tougher game, but it's better teamwork that draws me to my tarot advantage team. And yes, that's South Africa. Well, so that's South Africa to make it 2-0 according to Shruti. I'm a little bit on the fence, uh, but that will be it from us. Uh, Do subscribe uh, to our channel by clicking on that button and do follow us on Twitter at World Cricket Chat. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye.